a great wedding, a powerful wedding that took place in the grand style. That, can you celebrate great grace, sir? God bless you, Papa. I said that we're not enough. The following month, God bless our ministry with an 18 seaters bus. We have never had any property of any kind, not even a bicycle before then. Please, can you celebrate the great grace of God upon our Papa? That is why I said Papa came because of me. Praise the Lord. I said that we're not enough. The following month, God blessed me with a Pathfinder Jeep. Can you celebrate the grace of our Papa? Papa, you came because of me, sir. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I testified about that before, but the major reason why I'm testifying again is that six months after our wedding, a wedding that was attended by over 60 pastors, a great wedding, there was nothing like an issue. And I text Papa and I, I sold a sacrificial seed. I, I sold it and sent it to Papa's account. And Papa replied me, it is done. That same month, Papa appeared to me and my wife in our revelation. The following month she took in. She's heavily loaded now, heavily pregnant. Somebody shout Jesus! Hallelujah. Please, can you help me celebrate the great grace of God upon our Papa one more time with a big clap of faith? Hallelujah. What a grace. What a grace. Hallelujah. And that's why I said it came because of me. And lastly, you know, shortly before, before I submitted to Papa, I'd been connecting with Papa via television and satellite. And God led me to put up a book. And I, do, I, do, I put up four books all together. And at the moment, after submitting to Papa, God increased and advertised the books. Over 60,000 copies of my books have been sold, bought by people, and testimonies have been coming. Please, I want to celebrate the great grace of God. Can you give Jesus a shout? Praise the Lord. I just stand to testify to the glory of God. I encounter Papa in Port Harcourt. Tell us our names, where you are from. I'm Rachel from Port Harcourt. Rachel Tom Senebor. After I counter Papa, he talked about my fiance that there is someone here, you are with a, um, somebody's picture that has to do with arrest in UK. After that encounter, he was released to the glory of God. And in September, to remember Mama, I saw Mama in the Revelation and she said, go and carry a trailer, pack per title, sweep per title. And that same day, Someone called me from UK, pay some money to my account. I, 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 I ought to come here, but I have to connect to the grace and pay some money to Papa's account and they, God visit me. Papa pray concerning my finances and instantly there was a touch of God concerning my finances. I just want to give God glory. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? After this conference, you will be loaded with testimony. Praise the Lord. Please, we shout innovation. Help me celebrate grace in the house. My name is Mr. Sonny Usifu. My wife was pregnant. At seven months, she went for a scan, and the doctor said there is no way she will deliver normal. She can only deliver two cesarean operations. And uh, she was so downcasted. I encouraged her to just come home. She came, and uh, I said, Do you remember we have a father? He said, okay, I bought a CD, a, a man like me cannot take my life. Then so that one encouraged her. During the Jehovah, the doctor special, we came from Port Court. We met our daddy pray with our lay hand. From the baby was, at seven months, the baby was 1.2. From 1.2, we went for another scan. It was three point on the dot. After seven months, the baby was 1.2. From there after, it was three point on the dot. On the day of her delivery, I sent a message to our daddy. And he replied that she would deliver safely. Indeed, she delivered like Omega Child. Without operation. Operation. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? The second one was last Holy Ghost convention. And then he called for a seed. I came out. Surprisingly, after two weeks, God bless us with a Jeep. Praise the Lord. Somebody say grace. Praise the Lord. Join me to celebrate the grace of our father and mother in the house. My name is Collins King from Abba. The last minister's conference, Papa spoke to me prophetically that God is internationalizing my ministry. And uh, we left. And then we went to the embassy. To my amazement and surprise, the white man didn't interview us. He only congratulated us and gave us 
multiple visa. Me, my wife, and three kids. I am here to celebrate this day. After the prophecy. Now, before, before you came here, before you came out, Grace, do you, have you ever made an attempt to travel out? I have not traveled before. In fact, I have carried passport that expired in my house for over 20 years. But after you encounter Grace, then you will release. Grace will release you into your destiny tonight. Praise the Lord! Somebody celebrate Grace in the house. Celebrate Grace in the house. Celebrate Grace in the house. Amen. My name is Prophet Douglas from Port Harcourt. I cut on Grace January this year. When I have a counter with Papa in a dream, I came I went for that call from first Sunday on the year. And I came to pay a tithe. I said, God, connect me to this grace. And since that time, things have changed, turned around in my ministry. We were struggling by 100 now. But by the special grace of God, we are closing down to 500, 400 members in the church. Wait, before you encountered grace, you were, what was the attendance? 100. And after you encountered grace, the grace you your church increased from 100 to 500 are you just looking like that give jesus a shout amen praise the lord and the second one is we were struggling to have a land by so we got a land in portaco to build our also equator in it and the second thing yesterday when i came down here i was in that side and a member just called me he was crying on the phone and he was crying i said what happened he said her daughter just died and he can't he don't even breathe he doesn't open eye i say i'm in the land of life i'm not in the land of death and the grace upon and my father apostle john Cecilia, let it bring life back and he suddenly according to them they say the, the man and the woman they forget the lady get her back life and right now is alive it's not dead on the phone on the phone call on the god of our father and the power of by the power of god life came back and the child jumped back to life and you are looking like that celebrate grace everybody I appreciate jesus somebody say i'm the next to testify hallelujah i'd like you to shake hands with five people and tell them congratulations wherever you are shake hands with five people everywhere upstairs downstairs of the gallery everywhere just shake hands with people tell the person we are going to have a good time in the presence of the lord as i tell the person we are going to have a good time in the presence of the lord i want to appreciate god for bringing you safely and i decree your your purpose of coming will never be in vain i don't like that amen at all let me tell somebody again, prophesy to the person, say your purpose of coming will not be in vain. Please, I want us to pray like my custom is. Open your Bible to Matthew chapter 19 and verse 12. Matthew 19 verse 12. Matthew 19 verse 12 are we there for there are some who we are so born you knock from their mother's womb and there are some you knocks which are made you knock of men and there be you knock which have made themselves which have made themselves you knock now look up a bit who is a eunuch? One that does not produce, right? One that is not fertile. So eunuch speaks of infertility. To be a eunuch here means to be unproductive. So God was trying to explain to us that there are three things that makes a man unproductive. Being a eunuch, when one is a eunuch, is a sworn decision not to produce. Being a eunuch is, has gone beyond being just unfruitful. It's a sworn decision. Now he began to explain. He said people become unproductive when three things happen. 
He said people become unproductive when they are born unproductive. So the first thing that makes a man unproductive, make a man resultless, is when he is born into a lineage of such connection. I studied my Bible very well and I discovered that Haman that rose up against the Jews was a great grandchild of Haggag. Haggag who saw spared when God said tear down the Amalekite and slaughter Haggag. He spared Haggag. So Haggag raised up children that came against Israel. Haman did not just come against an individual. He came against a whole nation. Everyone in the Jew. So anyone in your lineage after you that you spared today will wait for you tomorrow. So we're going to pray. Say they became eunuch. Born eunuch. Please work on this mic. There's something not right. Balance this microphone. There is something not right on this microphone. Please work on it. So we are born eunuch. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to take a prayer? We are going to take three prayers briefly. I've told us over the years that it's your root that determines your fruit. If you must produce fruit, then your root is important. And we are going to lift up our voice and pray. My roots affecting my fruit. In any way my roots is affecting my fruit. Oh God of productivity. Intervene. Are you ready to pray? You must produce. I said you must produce. You must produce. Lift your right hand and say my father, my father. Shout it loud and clear. Shout it loud and clear. Anyway, my roots is affecting my fruits. Oh God of productivity, intervene. Open your mouth and fire prayer. Masa kala ratia basha, masoko pala raba ya kanda, ika suka liba kila ria lala, masuke lela bo shata, mara baga saka lala ba ya rada dash, maso pala dash, likolo bro si kile raba yele bo sha, ika liba liba lala rada basha. Ekele <laughs> In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, Jesus, uh, there are certain things about scriptures that can't be broken. That even when Jesus, you know, from his world began to explain by his life, might not be verbally, by his life began to show us. Jesus refused deliberately in heaven to come through the lineage of Reuben. He came, he, he came through the what? Lineage of who? Judah. He said, Judah, he, Judah, it is he that his brethren shall praise. Reuben was a cursed lineage. So Jesus escaped. I'm trying to let you know the power of background. The second one we're going to pray. See, 
background is important. David was the son of a maid. David's mother was not a legitimate wife. And if you discover, it affected David like a stigma. When the brothers gather, he's not always there. It was a foundational challenge, a major one. A major foundational issue. The second thing that affects productivity is a psalm became a eunuch by men. There are people who are standing to say nothing will happen. And that's why if a pastor doesn't carry fire, he's in trouble. In a life, in, in, in a, life a pastor collapsed on the pulpit and died. And a seven-year-old girl later started confessing. He said, I didn't intend to kill him. I only threw the arrow to test him. I, I didn't intend to kill him. I only threw the arrow just to test him. To, he said, let me check what he carries. And he died. He said, I didn't intend to kill him. Now, if somebody threw an arrow to test and a man died, what if they came to kill? And he was a title man. Title with a lot of title. I didn't intend to kill him. I only threw it to test him. And the man died on the pulpit. There are some that became you knock by men. So there are de definite and conscious people. who There are people in church who are power brokers. They might not be demonic, but they are power brokers. When they are in church, it can be a problem. But when there are the demonic flaws also in church, it could be a complicated issue. He said they became you not by men. There are certain people who have made vows that certain growth will not be experienced in certain dimensions. It might be true form of counsel. It might be true form of, of, of withdrawing their finances. You will pray. Any man sponsoring my own fruitfulness, whoever stands to sponsor the unfruitfulness I am experiencing now, directly, indirectly, today, your time is up. Lift up your right hand of fire. Say, my father, my maker. Any man sponsoring my unfruitfulness, your time is up. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Tonda Sata, Ikonabala Satelebota, Ikaporosia, 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 Ikaparaba, Ikaparaba, Ikonoros, Ata, In Jesus name In Jesus name You will take the third one It says some became you know, Some made Themselves Made Themselves There are most ministers Who are the reason Behind their problems they are the reason why they are suffering. I've always told us that Judas had the most direct message. That was a direct prophecy. You are the one. That's enough to change any man. But as Jesus told him, Jesus said, what you have to do, do quickly. And the Bible says, as he stood up, the Bible says, as he stood up, the people thought he was going for the Passover. 
They thought he was going for the preparation of the Passover because he kept the purse. Now, now he knew what Jesus meant, and yet he failed. Lord, in any way, I have a hand in my challenge. In any way, I have a hand in my confrontations. In any way, I am the problem of myself. Show me mercy and deliver me. In any way, there are people you have ordained by yourself. And they are the reasons why the ministry is crawling. You ordain them yourself. So you are the problem of the church. You are the problem. Lift your right hand of fire. Say, my father, my maker. Father, my maker. As I begin to pray. If I am my problem. If I am my problem. Show me mercy and deliver me. Show me mercy and deliver me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, show me mercy and deliver me. Lord, show me mercy and deliver me. Ya la so koto kota rapa rata ta 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 ya koto ta 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 rapa ta 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 ya koto 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 rete te 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 ila moto shaba la la ta ra la ta rapa la 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 ta ili koto to shaka ya pa ta 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 rapa in Jesus name Amen. Let's lift the hands and appreciate him. Appreciate him. Oh, Lord, Abba, Yalas. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Worship him, worship him. Hallelujah. Yalama Sotoli Abaragash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you worship. El Elonai. Jehovah Ivia. Hallelujah. Jehovah Ishmakaya. Yege Sahaduta. Hallelujah. Bread upon me, bread of heaven, bread upon me. Spirit of the Lord, as I lift my hands in surrender to your name, most high, I am yielding to your spirit. I am walking in your world. Lord Jesus, I adore. Lord Jesus, I adore. Lord Jesus, I adore. Your holy We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lamb of God. Ah! Sola balada bashakada. We worship you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Iyala bosi yala da ba yala da 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 da. And I love you, Lord. 
And I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul rejoice. To joy, my King, it is what you give. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let it be a sweet, sweet sap. 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 Let it be a sweet. Sweet sap in your ears. Take joy, my King. Hallelujah. It is what you give. Let it be a sweet, sweet sap. Let it be a sweet, sweet sap. Let it be a sweet, sweet sap. In your ears. Take the glory. Hallelujah. Take the glory. Take the Lord. And like the woman by the well, I was thirsty, looking for the waters that couldn't satisfy. And now I hear my master Savior calling. Come and drink from the wells that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the dark. Bread of heaven, you will feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me up. Sing it one more time. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, you will feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up. Fill it up and make me all. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Lord, I remember the place where you brought me from. Lord, I thank you for where I am today. I see you doing a new thing in my life. Lord, I'm grateful. For the future I see Lord I'm grateful For the future I see And Lord I'm grateful For the future I see Lord I'm grateful For the future I see Worship his name. What a future I see. 
Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Ay, 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 in Jacob Satanabadri. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Take your seat and give the Lord a wonderful clap offering. Hallelujah. I said, give me a wonderful clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. I would like you to open your Bible to, thank you, open your Bible to Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 3. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 3. Isaiah 6, 1 to verse 3. Have we found it? Are we there? If you are there, shout, I'm there. If you are not there, shout, I will not give up. All right. From verse 1 to verse 3. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings with twain. You know what twain means? Two. He covered his face. With twain, he covered his feet. Is it like that in your Bible? And with twain, he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And the whole earth is full of his glory i want to share briefly on encountering the true god encountering the true god encountering the true god hallelujah every turn around a man will experience is on the platform of an encounter every opportunity a man will see is on the platform of an encounter it is very important that we have a background understanding because most times when we as pastors we are having a judgmental service a judgmental issue the first thing we quote is in the year Uzziah died I saw the Lord we use that against witches. We use that against demons. Without having a proper understanding of that story. Before then, I'd like you to know that the book of Isaiah is a mini Bible. If you carry Isaiah, you are carrying the old Bible. Isaiah has 66 books. Just like the Bible. 66 books. 66 books. Like the Bible, the Bible has 66 canonized books of the evangelicals. I call it canonized because there are many orthodox churches that have some other books in their own Bible. They have what they call apocrypha books. From here you have apocalypse and all. But Bible scholars have made us know that all of those apocalypse and apocrypha books, all those extensions, they have no spiritual value. They don't contribute spiritually. So the book of Isaiah is a mini Bible. Isaiah was a major voice. Bible scholars will tell you Isaiah was the greatest prophet in the Old Testament. Isaiah was mentioned 50 times in the New Testament. After Abraham, he was the next man more mentioned before Moses. Isaiah was a voice. Isaiah means, yes, the, the, the Greek word for Isaiah is Yeshua Yahoo. Which means the Lord is salvation. Isaiah was a major voice. 
Now, if you study Isaiah, from Isaiah chapter 1 to Isaiah chapter 39, you will see God warning his people against sin. It was the judgment of God, the anger, the how God frowns at sin, a type of the Old Testament that also has 39 books. Are you following me? 39 chapters, a type of the Old Testament that has 39 books. The last 27 chapters of Isaiah was a, a, a remedy for sin. How God gives provision to the sinner that decides to change a type of the New Testament that has 27 books. So Isaiah is like a mini Bible. I'm not saying don't read other parts of the Bible, but I'm saying if you read Isaiah, you have read the Bible. I don't know if I'm saying something now. I'm laying a foundation. Isaiah was a voice. As you know, Isaiah, Bible scholars had a problem. They were even wondering if Isaiah was really the author of the book of Isaiah. Why? Because of his eschatological revelations. He was talking of the end time. Apart from talking of Christ, he was talking of the end time. Am I talking to somebody? It was something outstanding. It was a major, major move in his time. But Isaiah had a problem. There was a man called Uzziah. Uzziah was a powerful king that reigned for 52 years. He was rich. He was powerful. He was big. And Isaiah was connected to him, to Uzziah. Connected to Uzziah. Bible scholars make us know Isaiah was actually related to Uzziah. As far as Isaiah was concerned, there was no king like Uzziah. In actual sense, the word Uzziah means the might of Jehovah. If you go down to 2 Chronicles 26, you can discover, and 28, you discover how powerful Uzziah was. In his military campaign, Uzziah conquered territories and took over nations. So as far as Isaiah was concerned, outside Uzziah, nobody else. If you watch Isaiah chapter 1 to chapter 5, you discover that all the revelations of Isaiah were given around the palace. Because he was always around Uzziah. As far as he was concerned, if Uzziah died, nothing else. Uzziah was a definition to him of who God was. Am I communicating? He said no other person, ladies and gentlemen, God proved to Isaiah that for every man that is doing well, there are 7,000 duplicates. Nobody, only God has no substitute. Only God cannot be compared. How many of you believe that God is bigger than the biggest? You are the problem of Christianity. How many of you believe that God is greater than the greatest? Stronger than the strongest? You need to repent. God is not greater than the greatest. He's not richer than the richest. God is the greatest. God is the richest. When you say God is greater, the word greater is a terminology for comparison. But you say God is the greatest, it's a definite article. Who is rich where God is? Who is great where God is? Who is powerful where God is? Who is mighty where God is? Is not bigger than the biggest, he is the biggest. Not greater than the greatest, he is the greatest. Not stronger than the strongest, he is the strongest. I'm talking of Jehovah Ihia, Jehovah Ishmaqiah, Jehovah Yege Sahaduta, Jehovah Jadatun, Jehovah Jalon, Jehovah Nisi. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. Take your seat. Uzziah, please, I'm laying the foundation. Uzziah, Uzziah was a great man. Some of you are looking at me like, where did, where did you read all this thing from? Can I flow? Please get back home. What killed Uzziah? Uzziah became so great that he now decided to tamper the work of the priest. Second Chronicles 26 from verse 18. And that was when God came. Ladies and gentlemen, in his success, Uzziah, start, if you study 2 Chronicles 26, he started living right before God. But when wealth came, ladies and gentlemen, it is easier to manage success, to manage failure than to manage success. When you have no, when a man of God has no money, he can still fast. But when money comes, you say, why am I to fast? 
most people are failed not the temptation of immorality not the temptation of poverty they have failed the temptation of abundance that is why the bible makes it clear in proverbs 27 21 he said there is something called a test of praise god will give you praise to test you god will give you praise to examine you to try your heart he said as finding pots for silver the furnace for gold so is a man to his praise Uzziah and guess what God became angry as soon as Uzziah temp tempered the work of the priest the Bible said and God smote him with leprosy now that is when the Bible scholar said he died now he didn't actually die then when God smote him with leprosy he was taken outside the camp it was seven years later that he died so watch this it was that period Isaiah entered the temple after Uzziah died because it was the duty of the kings to install of the priests to install kings it was when he died Isaiah entered the temple and began to cry can I get a king like Uzziah the son of Uzziah was called Jotham Isaiah was saying can there be anybody like this in the midst of that the Lord revealed himself he was saying, Uzziah, you have not seen Isaiah, rather. You have not seen me because you had an image before you. Isaiah, you could not see me because you had an alternative. You had a picture mindset. Don't forget, before this, Isaiah had written five chapters, but yet he never saw the Lord. You are carrying the Bible as a preacher. As far as you are concerned, you have faith that there is God, but you have not seen any encounter of God. As far as you are concerned, you believe you are called, you believe you are anointed, but you have not had any personal revelation of God. And the Bible says, God revealed himself to Isaiah. Ladies and gentlemen, that you can have head knowledge, you can have any form of knowledge, but the day you see God in his full form, that is the day reality starts. Am I talking to somebody? Many have been preaching the Bible without an encounter of the God of the Bible. I am yet to say to you, I don't know about you, but I'm crying in this conference. Lord, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself. I want to see you in your full form. I want to see you in your standing dimension. Somebody say, Lord, shout it louder. 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 Shout it loudest. Take your seat. I'm talking about God revealing himself. The Yoruba called him Arubojo. I like what they get the call him. Or Yatuka. The Ghanaians call him Oyotiti Butayami. The Benins call him Utete Negyabi. When he reveals himself, you have been talking about God but you don't know God. You have been preaching about God. But how many times have you had an encounter? Listen, is the revelation of God to you that gives you confidence for your calling? Am I talking to somebody? It gives you confidence for your calling. It establishes your calling. It establishes why you are anointed. You can, you can then look at the devil and say, no matter what I'm going through, I have seen the Lord. No matter my encounter, my experience, my trouble, I have seen God. And today, he shall reveal himself. I say he shall reveal himself. My God shall reveal himself. Let me hear the loud amen. Let me hear a louder amen. Let me hear a louder amen. Take your seat. You know, check every man who he has revealed himself to. Reality did not start in the life of Jacob until the day he saw. The day he saw him, reality starts. The revelation of God is what brings reality of your call. Uzziah died. You have alternative. Many people have alternative. You are not called as a pastor to be a sermonizer. You are called to be a messenger. Stop going to the internet and downloading messages. You are not a sermonizer. You are a messenger. A message from the head goes to the head. But a message from the heart goes to the heart. 
Because, you know, research is good, but revelation is better. I said research is good, but revelation is better. You are not called as a sermonizer. You are not a sermonist. You are a messenger. Uh, can I go on? I said, can I go on? I like the Bible. You know, the, the first 39 chapter shows us God's intolerance for sin, no matter who the sinner is. You know what he called Abraham? Abraham was the only one the Lord called my friend. For others, he said, yeah, my friends, general. In the book of John, he said, yeah, my what? Friends, if you keep my commandment, general. But Abraham, he said, my friend. Yet God did not spare his sin. If there's something about God, if he loves you, he will expose you. If you are a man, you are immoral, you are a deceiver, you are a liar, you are a cheat, and yet your church is growing, it means God has forgotten you. As far as God is concerned, your judgment is confirmed. He said, no, let him be sleeping with people's wife and his church be growing. Leave him alone. I've forgotten about him. Because the one he still loves, any little error, he will expose. So if you are here and you are doing wrong and you are not being exposed, it means God has concluded your judgment. It means God has forgotten your case. If you are if you are here and God has not judged you, God has not exposed you. Do you know what Isaiah said? When he saw God, he said, Woe is me. All I've been doing is error. If you are not judged, it means your case is concluded. If you are still an alcoholic as a pastor, an immoral man as a pastor, a fraudster as a pastor, and yet you are having crowd, it is not a sign of approval. It means God has already concluded your case even before the judgment day. He has said that nobody can change my mind on this man because I have concluded to finish him. Oh God, expose me. Lord, expose me. Lord, expose me. Lord, expose me. Yahweh of Israel. I like what he said. Ooh, he said, He that Yahweh of Israel loveth, he chastiseth, and scourgeth every son he receiveth. Lying, making money, nobody finds out. And as far as you are concerned, it has become a regular routine. God is saying, leave him alone. I've concluded this case. Say, leave him, leave him, leave him. Leave her. Just don't, don't say anything. It's not smartness. It's a sign that your case has been concluded. Trumpet has not sound generally, but as far as God is concerned, your own trumpet has sounded. Trumpet has not sounded generally, but as far as God is concerned, your own has sounded. Take your seat. Can I move on? I'm wasting your time, yeah? Now, let's go. The revelation Isaiah saw was a threefold revelation. A three-dimensional revelation. The first revelation was the upward revelation. The revelation of God. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot see God and not see power. My little children, whom I travel in bed until Christ be formed in me. When Peter saw him in Luke chapter 5, you know, you know the story of Luke chapter 5 by the side of Galilee? Let me give you a little illustration. Look up one minute. The Sea of Galilee was a transparent sea. It's a very transparent sea. Sit down. It's a transparent sea. So, when, you, when, when it's daytime, the fishes, when you, are, you stand by the banks of the river, the fishes can see you because the sea is transparent. And that is why the fishermen in the Sea of Galilee do not fish in the daytime. They fish at night. If you remember, Peter said, we have toyed. They don't fish in the day. They fish at night. When it's dark, the fishes cannot see. Peter came, fished according to his human calculation all night when the fishes cannot see. Yet the fish he saw that day. Because for a man who was a strong fisherman that he, had, he didn't just have a net, he had a sheep. That was a fishing magnet. But no fish. You know what Jesus did? 
Jesus, Peter had already sailed the ship to the land. Jesus came back, sat on the ship, and told Peter to redirect the ship back. If you have seen God, he must redirect you. If you have seen God, one of the first signs is that he gives you a clear cut direction. And while he was through, the same fishes, it, now it was the daytime when the water was still transparent. The Bible says, and he said, cast your net. Peter didn't argue. Peter casted the same net. Can I give you a prophecy? As you return back, the same place that would not produce before, it will begin to produce now. I said the same place that will not produce before, it will begin to produce now. It will begin to produce now. It will begin to produce now. Sit down. When you see him, <laughs> when his presence, listen, theologically, no man sees God and lives. What did Isaiah see? John 12 41. The glory of Christ. That was the same glory that visited Obedidom in 1 Samuel chapter 6. Sit down. You, now, do you remember the Bible says, as soon as the ark of God came to Bedibdon's house, three months he prospered. Ladies and gentlemen, if God, if the presence of God is strong in your life, you can't exceed three months before you prosper. It's a prescription. It's a prescription. Hold on. Three, when I see David, the first question I want to ask David in heaven is that you are wicked. 50,000 Beshemites look into the act and they died. Uzzah tried to touch the ark. He died. You now left it in a man's house. The intention was not for blessing. It was so finish this man. So if I see David, I want to ask him, what were you thinking? When you left what was killing others in the house of a man. But well, can I shock you? The Bible says Obedidom was a Gittite, was in the Git was a Gittite and a Levite. How can a man, a Gittite, become a Levite? The land of Gittite is one of the lands of the Philistines. That period, Saul was killing all the prophets, all the Levites. Obedidom was a Levite. Saul was killing all the Levites. So Obedidom escaped and began to stay in the land of Gittite. He was still following the Lord. He was in a strange land. While he was doing that, hunger came. Poverty came. Hardship came. But one day God decided to strategize. It was right in front of his house that the ark killed Uzzah. As he killed Uzzah, David said, please put it in the next house. God was trying to reward. He said, despite the fact that Saul was against you, though you left the land, you didn't leave the faith. Though you left the land, you continued. And God said it was time to bless him. Can I speak to you today? It doesn't matter how long you have been laboring. You are asking yourself, where is God? You have prayed, you have fasted, and people are now mocking you. Some of them wish you for dead. Just the way David wished, wished uh, Obedidom for dead. But God did a turnaround. There is a strategic lifting that is about to come your way. There's a strategic prosperity that's about to come your way. You are not going to recover in the next three months. 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 There is a turnaround. There is a prosperity. There is a turnaround. There is a testimony. There is an intervention. An opportunity. An open door. In the next three months. Where you could not enter. You are going to enter. What you could not handle. You are going to handle. What you could not achieve. You are going to achieve. I speak for your ministry. Anyway. You have lacked direction. In the next three months. You will not just have direction. You shall be settled. You shall be settled. You shall be settled. You shall be settled. 
I release grace to manifest for you. In the next three months, there is a turnaround, a turnaround, ministerial explosion, ministerial explosion for yourself, for your wife, for your children, for your ministry. It happens to you. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God say yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Glory is on your side. Fire is on your side. Favor is on your side. God is on your side. God is on your side. Lift the way shot fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 1 to chapter 5. Isaiah was preaching good message. Let, come now, let us reason together. And he was not reasoning. If you are willing, and he was not willing. Good message, but yet no encounter. Many of you, you have good, good sermonists. You are good deliverance ministers. But it's not reflecting your life. One of the signs of reality is that it reflects in your life. You can't be preaching prosperity and you are stranded. A young man was preaching prosperity, was writing books. And one day I saw him, I was driving past, I saw him in Benin, near Ring Road or so, holding books. Keys to prosperity. I called him. I said, this is your revelation, is not for now. Keep it. Because it does not reflect in you. I said, nobody will buy. People want a revelation that is touchable, tangible, feelable, holdable. I said, I said, I'm not saying God didn't talk to you. You see, you must learn to interpret the voice of God. When we start, get to the prophetic, I will explain to you signs to understand vision. You, sometimes God doesn't speak for today. You must know what, what God is saying per time. A young pastor, God said, he had the voice of God. Jehovah Almighty. My son! I need six wives. My son! I need six wives. Yahweh of Israel was the one talking. Not the devil. But he did not understand. He went to my... And I need 16 wives, sorry. 16 wives. He didn't understand. He was a pastor of a church of 3,000 people. And a voice said, My son, I need 16 wives. He didn't understand. And he didn't have a, a prophetic mentor. So he went there and proposed to 16 ladies. Said, you want to do one? They said, what's going on? They said, I had God. That was how he died. On his burial day, a young man was passing by, saw the poster of his burial. Never met him before. The Holy Ghost came on the young man. Walked towards the burial. I said, thus here the Lord. I spoke to my servant. That the church is my bride. I spoke to my servant. That he has 3,000 people. I wanted him to open 16 branches to spread the word. But he had no interpretation. Married 16 women and died. Because he had no prophetic mentor. He was in a generation where people speak against the prophetic because it has been abused. 16 branches. God was saying, church is my bride. I need 16 more openings. Not one. He didn't understand and said, what does this mean? God cannot contradict his word. God said one man, one wife. So he can't contradict his word. He needed a prophetic mentor to explain to him. But he had no mentor. That's what happens when you become, you become your own father in the Lord. You are not accountable to anybody. That's what happens to you when you know more than a mentor. Because of your extra biblical revelations over the years. That have not translated into an explosive ministry. You are still crawling. The truth that does not set you free, you don't know it. Knowing about it does not mean knowing it. 